All right, I'm gonna show you folks how to settle a debt collection lawsuit. I'm gonna go over three main concepts, all right? First concept is strategy, second is tactics, and third is the aftermath. All right, first, we're gonna get into strategy. So that's like how to make a decision about what to do when you're sued for a debt. Right? Should I do this or should I do this other thing? I'm gonna help you figure that out. First thing to know is that settlement is usually the best option if you're being sued for a debt. All right, that does hinge on a couple of things, right? But if you legitimately owe some portion of the debt that you're being sued for, settlement is probably the best option for you. I'm gonna go into detail about why that is. About one in 13 of all consumers that have a line of credit have made a uh, debt settlement agreement on one or more of their accounts. All right, so that's like almost, almost 10% of people in the US uh, have actually made a settlement on their account and paid less than the amount that they owe. So the first thing you can do when you are sued for debt uh, is you can file an answer, right? Uh, so that's a pretty great option, right? So if you file an answer, then you're protecting yourself against uh, the debt lawsuit. Um, you're making sure that you don't lose by default. Because if you don't file an answer, you're gonna lose the lawsuit in like 30 days or less, right? So you definitely want to file an answer, okay? And then the second thing you can do is you can do nothing all right, a lot of people out there actually uh, do the, just that, they just do nothing, right? So they're sued for a debt lawsuit, um, they, don't, they don't respond, and then what happens is they end up losing and then all their wages get garnished, the bank account gets garnished, etc. Not a, not a great option. And then third is you can do something, but that something that you do is actually invalid, all right? So do something invalid. Uh, invalid activities include uh, a, a lot of things, right? So you can like, uh, one one of those things is actually offering a settlement agreement too early. So you can like call up the uh, phone number at the top of the complaint, the phone number for the opposing lawyer, and you can say, hey, uh, hey let's work out an agreement. I see that you sued me. And the lawyer will be like, oh yeah, okay, you want to pay me 100 bucks a month? Uh, sweet, for like the next 50 years. Awesome, let's do that. Um, and then you're like, oh, great. Everything's all figured out then. That was a great phone call with the attorney. And then the attorney goes behind your back, files for default judgment against you because you didn't respond to the lawsuit. Then you lose the lawsuit. And then like two months later, when you are five minutes late on that payment, the lawyer then says, hey, good thing I got this default judgment against you. I'm not gonna garnish your wages at 25% out of every paycheck. That's not a great situation. All right, so that's why offering a settlement agreement too early in the lawsuit is actually totally invalid. Other invalid actions at this point include filing for bankruptcy. Uh, if you file for bankruptcy, uh, it's gonna take a while, at least like a few months, probably a year for that bankruptcy to go through. Um, and in that time frame, you're gonna be, uh, you're gonna be sued for this debt, right? And they're gonna start garnishing your wages. You aren't gonna be protected from this debt lawsuit until after that bankruptcy goes through. All right, so that's a little bit of the thought process around the strategy of settling a debt lawsuit, okay? So basically the main thing you need to know when you're sued for debt, first, file an answer. Second, offer a settlement. How do you offer a settlement? That's what I'm gonna get into next. I wanna let you know that SolaSuit can actually do this for you. I have a great document called a Debt Lawsuit Settlement Letter uh, that you can generate on our site. You can send it uh, to the attorney and it will help you figure out how much money you can afford to pay and what the optimal offer is. Uh, and you can go over SolaSuit.com to do that. We'll do it for you. Uh, SolaSuit does have awesome reviews. Uh, we have a review from our friend uh, Karina uh, right here, paraphrasing a little bit. I got hit with a lawsuit and started looking up information online, found solo suit, and decided to try them out. At first I was just interested in the free services, but I ended up going up with the higher option and made the purchase for their service. They literally printed and mailed my documents that day. It was very easy to complete the forms and upload the documents. Uh, I was initially worried, of course, didn't know if it was a scam. Of course, you know, we're not a scam. Uh, we're actually just here to help you out. All right, so getting back into it, tactics. Uh, the main tactics uh, is one, file an answer. You can use solo suit to file an answer. It's super easy, all right? All right, so step two is to send, send a debt lawsuit settlement letter. You usually want to send that debt lawsuit settlement letter around 30 days or within 30 days after filing the answer document, all right? So you want to give the opposing side time to realize that you answered 
uh, but you want to send it before they decide what to do next. So before like they decide to file another court document or like file for discovery, um, etc. You want to get them right there in the, in the time of their weakness because that's the time when you have the most power. All right. So right after you file an answer document is when you have a lot of leverage. You've proven, hey, I actually know what the heck I'm doing. I can respond to this lawsuit. I can fight this lawsuit. So it'd be more uh, beneficial to you if you just settle this case right now. If you try to settle before the answer, they're gonna be like, hey, this noob, like doesn't even know how to respond to the lawsuit. Why the heck am I gonna settle with this guy? I can just sue him and I can garnish his wages, right? So settling after you file the answer is the opportune time to do that. All right, so we're gonna help you determine how much you should offer as a settlement. All right, first thing is that you wanna make a lump sum payment offer rather than a payment plan. All right, a lump sum payment is when you offer uh, to pay off, you just offer to settle the debt for one payment right now. So you get to resolve it right now and there's no real risk of you messing it up. Uh, also, you will pay less in the long run on a, on a lump sum payment. On a payment plan, however, you have to end up paying more over a longer period of time. There's more ways for you to mess it up, like you can miss a payment. Um, and also it doesn't resolve the issue now, right? It might not resolve the issue for even years to come. Uh, so lump sum payment is the best way to go. Uh, so you first have to ask yourself, you know, how much money, how much cash do I have on hand right now? Uh, it's basically like how much money is in your bank account? Is it like $100? Is it $10,000? Uh, how much money do you have available to yourself? And then, you know, if you don't have much money available right now, how much money can you have available uh, within a month or after like one payment period? And then is the person that's suing you, is it a debt buyer or is it the original creditor? That makes a huge difference. Uh, for a debt buyer, they bought the debt for only like 8% on average of the face value of the debt. Okay, so if it's a $100 debt, then they bought that debt for only $8. That means if you paid them the full amount, like the full $100, they're gonna make a killing, they're gonna make a ton of money. But even if you paid them only $10, they'd still, uh, all, all being equal, they'd still make a profit of like $2. So pretty good deal for them, great deal for you. All right, so generally we think of debt buyers as being willing to settle for between 1% up to 60% of the debt. All right, 1% is probably pretty unreasonable, but more like 10% to 60% of the debt, probably gonna be able to settle somewhere in that range. With an original creditor, however, uh, they, they gave you all that money, right? So if you're being sued by American Express for credit card debt, and it's $10,000, um, they probably lent to you like that full $10,000. Maybe they lent you $9,000, an additional $1,000 in interest or a, a fee, something like that. But they lent you a lot of that money, so they're going to be unwilling to settle uh, from, for a lot lower than that. But that said, even with original creditors, we see a range being between 20% and 70% of the debt. All right, so somewhere in there is, uh, so that's the range. Somewhere within those percentages is where you can uh, peg your offer. Okay, so let's say you're being sued for ten thousand uh, dollars by a debt buyer. Uh, then your target amount, the target amount that you want to uh, not pay more than, is fifty percent. So like five hundred dollars of the debt. The keywords here are the Ackerman approach. Uh, the Ackerman approach is a really solid uh, negotiation tactic. It's loved by uh, academics. It's also in like the book by Chris Voss, Never Split the Difference a former FBI hostage negotiator. Uh, great, great tactic for negotiating. I'm gonna show you exactly how it works. So now that you have this target amount, that's uh, step one is make your target amount. Uh, step two is initiate with an offer of 65% of that target amount. Uh, again, just for like the simplicity of math, let's, uh, let's, let's take our target amount, let's say it's just $100. So you take that $65 and make that first offer to the debt collector. Um, and then the debt collector is going to receive that offer and they'll say, you know, it's too low for us. Maybe we could do, uh, they might come down like a little bit closer to your target amount, but not there yet. So then you're going to use empathy to say no, right? So you're going to say like, you know, how am I supposed to do that? And, you know, I wish I could, but this is not in my budget. You know, it's really, it's really embarrassing, but I can't accept that offer. Okay, you can say stuff like that. I'm not being polite, but it's just not in the cards for you. So then your second offer, you bump it up. You come up quite a bit, you jump 20% up to 85%. So your second offer is gonna be, you know, you know maybe I could do $85. Then they're gonna counter, they're gonna say, maybe, maybe they'll actually accept it, but let's say they counter, they'll say, no, that's too low for us. So then your third offer is 
you'll see that the jump between the second and third is just 10% rather than 20%, right? So the jumps are getting smaller each time. And they might, again, accept it, or maybe they'll counter. And then on your, uh, your fourth offer, you're going to say 100%, and you know, hopefully at this point, uh, they'll see that, oh, this fourth offer, it only jumped up 5%. Wow, this guy must be reaching the end of his budget, right? He must really not have any more money that he can spend. And uh, in that case, right, they'll just uh, hopefully accept that offer. But if they again counter, then you jump in with 100% plus non-monetary. Okay, so at this point you could say, hey, you know, I really don't have any more money, I can offer you 100 bucks plus like a box of cookies. Right, something, just throw something in there to let them know like, hey, you still wanna make this deal work, but you are seriously, you are actually at your limit, right? It's actually a final offer. It cannot be more than that. Hey, you still wanna make this deal work, but you are seriously, you are actually at your limit, right? It's actually a final offer. It cannot be more than that. And at this point, hopefully they accept that offer or even before they accept the offer. So they accepted your offer, now what? Well, now you make a settlement agreement. Okay, oftentimes debt collectors are like the more sophisticated party in this uh, situation than like the person offering them the, the settlement. Um, so usually they're going to make the settlement agreement. Usually they have one drafted. Uh, but just in case, you gotta make sure there's a few things on the settlement agreement, okay? Because this is a document, kind of like a contract, documenting the agreement that you arrived at. Okay, you gotta make sure that it says like, hey, we settled this debt, we settled this $100,000 debt for $10,000. Right, let's make sure that they can't mess around with you. All right, another thing you gotta make sure is in there is the language settlement in full, in quotes, because you gotta have that exact term in there. Uh, that's saying that this is fully settled, everything is taken care of. Just for good record keeping, wanna make sure that the case number of the lawsuit is in there. Also probably wanna make that sure that the account number for the debt collector for your account is in there, as well as like the account number for the bank or the, or the loan is in there. Another thing you gotta make sure is dismiss with prejudice. You want that language in there. Uh, if they dismiss the case, you, you wanna make sure that the debt collector says they will dismiss the lawsuit with prejudice. That means that it will be taken out of court, you'll win the lawsuit effectively, and they can never sue you for the matter again. If they don't have the phrase with prejudice in there, then they can and probably will sue you again for this debt. And then lastly, you just gotta make sure you have the date of the agreement. Uh, it's just good for record keeping to have that in there. All right, once you have the settlement agreement, you have to figure out the payment. Okay, once that settlement agreement is there, you should feel pretty safe making a payment to them. Uh, usually check is easiest. Um, a lot of these debt collectors have like online payment portals, but they oftentimes ask for a ton of personal information and they are very easy to use. So if you have a checkbook, uh, I know a lot of people probably don't. I haven't had checkbooks for a while, right? Cause it's like, you know, who, who, who even has a pen? Who has a pen to write on a piece of paper? Not a lot of people. All right, but if you have a checkbook, uh, you can send them a check. Um, probably what's better than that is actually going to your bank and getting a cashier check, right? So you pay the bank, let's say you're selling for $100, you pay the bank $100, they give you a cashier's check for $100, that's like pre-approved. Or you can do a money order, you go to the post office, pay them 100 bucks, they give you a money order, you mail that to the collector. Uh, the reason cashier's check and money orders are probably better is because it doesn't allow the, the debt collector to engage in dirty tricks and like wait like a year before they cash that check or something like that, right? Or like 90 days. Uh, they wait until like the moment, like the last day of the month when they know you haven't been paid and you might not have the money in your bank account still, um, to cash that check. Right? So if you pay them with a secured payment, like a cashier check or money order, uh, you'll make sure that that money is taken out of your bank account and that they, they get that money. Uh, then the final step here is to, of these tactics is you gotta follow up to make sure that the debt collector actually files for dismissal. Right? So you sent them the money, you have the settlement agreement, uh, but it's really not over until they file for dismissal in court. So you gotta make sure that they send a motion to dismiss with prejudice to the court, the court approves it, and that's the official resolution of the lawsuit. All right, so make sure, hound them, make sure that they get that in the court, make sure that that's taken care of properly. Uh, the third section here is the aftermath. We're gonna go over two main things, all right? How will debt settlement affect your credit report? And two, how will debt settlement affect your taxes? All right, two big questions that a lot of people don't always think about. So, how will debt settlement affect your credit score? Well, I got some bad news for you. Your credit score will go down. All right, it might go down a little bit, it might go down a lot. Okay, so basically, if you have really good credit, let's say you have like a 750 credit score, um, and you settle this debt, it, your credit score is probably gonna get dinged more than if you had like a, a 500 credit score and it's already super low, it won't be dinged as much. Credit scores are designed to reward people 
that pay back the money they uh, borrow at the terms they borrow them. When you settle a debt, you are changing the terms of the agreement, right? The debt settlement agreement now takes, uh, now, now trumps the original credit agreement. You're, you are paying off the debt, but you're actually paying it off at different terms than when you took out the money. And because of that, the credit score will be dinged, will be impacted negatively because you are changing the terms at which you're paying back the money. And just as a reminder, about 35% of the credit score, of FICO's credit score, is determined by payment history. 30% is determined by the amount owed. If the lender agrees and you settle the debt, then it is reported to the credit bureau as, quote, paid dash settled. So a debt settlement is certainly better on a credit report than a charge off. But it doesn't mean the same thing on a credit report as paid as agreed, right? Because again, you're changing the terms of payment. If possible, um, it would be great for you to negotiate for the creditor to report it as being paid in full uh, to the credit bureau. And that will kind of resolve this, right? Even though it's not actually paid in full, uh, if you have the leverage to negotiate that, that's an awesome move. Uh, these debt settlements, like I think pretty much everything, stay in your credit report for seven years. Uh, you should prioritize keeping current on your good accounts instead of settling on these delinquent accounts. Uh, a great thing to keep in mind, uh, just to note on this whole process generally, is that the AFCC uh, reports that people are usually getting uh, between 60 and 30% uh, hacked off through debt settlement. All right, so if, again, if the uh, total amount of the debt is $10,000, people are usually paying only like $3,000 to $6,000 on that debt, which is really uh, awesome. And uh, again, just to drive this point home, um, if the account is like super delinquent, which probably is in this case, uh, it's not settling, it isn't gonna have as big of an impact as if the account was actually current. All right, and the second thing here is how does settling a debt impact your taxes? Uh, well, basically, it doesn't, uh, it kind of has a bad impact on your taxes, all right, to cut to the chase. So the difference between the uh, total amount of the debt and the settlement amount will be considered taxable income. Okay, the IRS refers to this as canceled debt. They're saying, oh, well, this guy basically got money, right, because he owed $10,000, but they only paid like $6,000 for it. Well, that basically means that he got $4,000 in income, okay? I mean, that's kind of crazy because that uh, he didn't get $4,000 in income, but the IRS is going to consider that because they left tax and stuff, so they're going to swoop in. So they're going to tax it in the form of a 1099-C, essentially. Uh, so when the collector uh, files that settlement, they're going to send notice to the IRS, and then they're going to send you a 1099-C uh, reporting that as a taxable income. Um, so if you get a 1099-C at the end of the year, uh, you should be aware the IRS knows that you settled that. They're going to be expecting you to pay taxes on that, and you should pay taxes on it. Uh, just as a reminder, the tax rates in the U.S. go from 10% to 30% of gross income. Uh, and they are progressive, so the more money you make, uh, you'll be bumped up into a higher tax bracket. Right? So there are some uh, exclusions uh, to this, right? So student loans are a common uh, exception. Um, if you have a student loan that you settled or was forgiven in 2020 or beyond, then that's probably accepted and you probably won't have to pay taxes on that as gross income. Uh, some exclusions include bankruptcy, so if you file for bankruptcy uh, and those debts are erased in bankruptcy, uh, those are excluded, you won't have to pay taxes on them. Or insolvency, so insolvency means that you have more debt than you have money or assets. Um, so if you have like $100,000 in debt, but you only make $10,000 a year and you have no property, then you're probably insolvent and you won't have to pay taxes uh, if you settle that debt for like $10,000 or something like that. All right, so just as an example again, so if you have, uh, let's say you have $10,000 in canceled debt because you, you settled a debt, um, you might end up paying taxes at like a 20% rate just, just for the sake of ease of numbers. Uh, which means if you're paying 20% on $10,000, you are going to end up paying $2,000. Alright, that's, that's totally like an oversimplification, that's just the general idea. Uh, hopefully you're using like TurboTax or something like that so you can make sure your taxes are on the right page, right? Alright, well that's pretty much it, folks. Um, just as a reminder, you can go over to SoulSuit.com. Uh, we can draft a debt lawsuit settlement letter for you. Uh, it's a super great letter, Makes sure it has all of those all of those things in there that you need. Uh, you can also use us to file an answer to respond to a lawsuit. You can use us for other stuff as well. Uh, so go over to soulsuit.com, check it out. And that's what I've got for you. Hope you liked the video. Took a lot of work.